All right, guys, it's that time of the week again, and we are back for some more championship transfer rumors. Plenty to go through in today's video. As always, I want to hear from you in the comments down below. Any other rumors that we don't mention in today's video that you've seen going around, get them in the comments down below, and we'll give them a mention in the next video. If you're not already, please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's just jump in. We saw Derby County completing a move for Kenzo Guzman, who's coming over from AZ Alkmaar. Looks to have a really nice passing range. We just Discussed this transfer rumour uh, on last time's video, but it's since been confirmed. He's Derby's fourth summer signing and looks to be a good pickup. Sheffield Wednesday have signed former Man United forward Charlie McNeil on a free transfer. Quite a few clubs were after him, but Wednesday have managed to win the race for his signature. 20 years old, by no means the final product, but definitely got a bundle of potential. On a free transfer, I think that could be a nice pickup from Sheffield Wednesday there. Moussa Sissoko is back in English football. He's re signed for what? after spending the last couple of years playing in France. Now, he is set to turn 35 next month, so definitely is no longer at the peak of his powers, but Watford fans will still be hoping that he's got enough in the tank to make a difference at championship level. Millwall have announced the signing of Jaffa Tanganga on a permanent basis. He's coming from Tottenham, obviously spent a portion of last season on loan with Millwall. This one had been rumoured for quite some time. It's taken a little bit of time for Millwall to fully finalise this deal, but it's since gone through. I think they're getting a really good deal there. 25 years old, already familiar with the club. Yeah, I'm on board with that signing. Daniel Jebison has left Sheffield United. He signed for Bournemouth on a permanent basis with the Cherry splashing a fee of around 1.5 million on the young striker. 20 years old and still quite a raw prospect, but Bournemouth clearly see the potential there. My team Preston North End have announced the signing of Icelandic midfielder Stefan Thordarsson, a towering Icelandic international, and I'm really excited to see him at Deep next season obviously with Alan Brown leaving we needed a replacement in that department and this one seems to tick quite a few boxes Preston have had quite a bit of success in recent years in scouting the Danish league we've obviously signed the likes of Emil Reese and Mads Frokja who have both been really good players for us hopefully Thor Arson will be able to follow along on a similar sort of path there was interest from the likes of QPR and Derby as well but Preston have won the race for his signature. Leeds United have re-signed former goalkeeper Alex Cairns. He'd be coming in there as a backup goalkeeper ahead of next season. We saw Torbjorn Hegem joining West Bromwich Albion. This one went through last week. The Norwegian centre-half is coming over from the Swedish league. Excited to see more of him next season for sure. Speaking of West Brom, we also saw them completing a deal for Joe Wildsmith, signing him on a free transfer. There were quite a few people that were a little bit surprised that Wildsmith was let go by Derby at the end of last season after a really good season in League One. But it's been no secret that Derby are after an upgrade in that goalkeeping department and you'd imagine Wildsmith would be coming into the baggies as a backup option for next season to push Alex Palmer for that number one spot. And one deal that we just seen go through is Alan Brown moving to Sunderland. Honestly, as a North End fan, it just doesn't seem right looking at him in a different kit after spending the last decade with Preston. But I think Sunderland are getting a cracking player here. I think they've learned from some of their mistakes from last season, maybe, with just how inexperienced that squad was at different points of the year. They're getting the proper leader in Alan Brown, someone with over 400 appearances under his belt at Preston North End. I think Brown realised this summer was probably his last chance for a big sort of move elsewhere he's got that at Sunderland and both for the player and club I think this one could be a really good fit it's a really youthful squad there but Brown will come in as a bit more of a leading figure and Brown by no means is this player who is going to be a match winner for Sunderland week in week out but he's a Solid player in the middle of the park with a really good engine on him. He'll absolutely run for days. He's a 6 or 7 out of 10 in most attributes of the game. He contributes both defensively and offensively. And I think for what that Sunderland squad is probably in need of right now... Alan Brown ticks a lot of boxes. He can play as a 6, an 8, a 10, a right back or right wing back when you need him. Highly versatile and I just think that signing could turn out to be a really good one. It pains me that North End will have to play against him next season because he spent his whole career with us up until this point. But Sunderland are getting a really good player there who will be really motivated to make a success of this move. I'm in no doubt. A really good character. But I can't lie, it does pain me to see him in another team shirt. 
But those are some of the done deals which we've gone through in the championship over these past few days. Now, without any further ado, let's jump into the transfer rumours. We'll start out with the John Swift news because West Brom are reportedly willing to cash in on the 29-year-old playmaker and Middlesbrough are among the clubs who are interested in signing him. It's an interesting transfer story. Swift is going into the final year of his contract at the Hawthorns, so clearly West Brom want to get a little bit of money for him while they still can. He's 29 years old now. Probably didn't have his very best season last time round for West Brom. He was sort of in and out of that starting 11 last season, wasn't he? But still scored nine goals. At his very best, though, Swift definitely has the skill set and capacity to be one of the best creative outlets in the championship. Still at 29 years old as well, he's still at a decent age where he can absolutely still make a difference for a club in the top end of the championship. Just thinking of where Swift would potentially slot into that burst side under Michael Carrick as well, I could definitely see why they'd be interested. The Jaden Philogene saga continues to unravel, but it does feel like we're in the final days of this transfer saga. As of recording, Ipswich still looks like his most likely destination with the newly promoted club having an £18 million deal in place. Personal terms have already been agreed and it's thought that he'll have his medical at Ipswich in the following days, although interestingly, he is currently at Hull City's pre-season training camp in Turkey. Another potential twist in the saga as well is the fact that Aston Villa do have a clause within Philogene's contract where they're able to match any club's offer and it's thought that they have gone ahead and matched Ipswich's offer for Philogene, but where he ends up will ultimately be his choice. We saw QPR announcing the departure of Chris Willock and it looks like the 26 year old is on his way to Cardiff signing there on a free transfer and Cardiff could be getting an absolute bargain with that deal. Now QPR fans I think will be quick to realise that Willock definitely wasn't at his best last season. He was sort of in and out of that starting 11, got four goals and four assists, definitely had moments of quality but his consistency maybe wasn't quite there last time around and that's what Cardiff are going to look to get out of him next season but I'm in absolutely no doubt that if Cardiff get Willock fully motivated, fully fit and with his head screwed on, they are getting a really good player for championship level. And sort of play anywhere across that forward line on the left, right or in the number 10. Creativity was a bit of an issue for Cardiff at times of last season, so I can definitely see why they're going in for him. Speaking of QPR, they're still keen to sign Isaac Hayden on a permanent basis, but a potential stumbling block has popped up with their pursuit of the experienced midfielder. I think this was already common knowledge really, but it is being reported now. QPR won't be able to match his current wage packet that is on at Newcastle United, which does add a little bit of doubt into the potential deal for this summer, but we'll wait to get a few more updates on that over these next few days and weeks. We recently spoke about Jake Clark Salta and the interest he's got from the Premier League, especially from Wolves. Well, QPR have since gone ahead and slapped a £10 million price tag on the defender's head. He's definitely one of QPR's most prized assets and they don't want to see him leave on the cheap. The defender is under contract with the club until 2026, so they've got a reasonable amount of bargaining power with this deal in, in terms of setting his actual price tag. Leeds United midfielder Glenn Kamara does have an offer on the table from Rennes. It's been well documented that the French club does have an interest in the Leeds United midfielder, but Leeds would only be willing to sell him for the right sort of money. He's under contract with the club until 2027. Obviously, they've already lost a player in that position in Archie Gray. I know he played a lot of last season as a fullback, but his natural position was in midfield so if they were to lose both Gray and Kamara they definitely leave themselves with quite a bit to do in terms of rebuilding that midfield ahead of next season. Kamara I thought was a decent player that kept Leeds sort of ticking along but definitely not as irreplaceable as someone like a Somerville or a Rutter or someone to that degree. What does the future hold for West Brom midfielder Oka Yakoshlu? Definitely one of West Brom's most important players, really good holding midfielder, especially for championship level, but quite crucially, he's now into the final year of his contract at West Brom, and in a similar situation to John Swift maybe, this club could be the club's final time to go ahead and cash in. Plenty of clubs in Turkey have seen linked with Besiktas among them, but could he move elsewhere in the championship because Hull City are said to be interested in the midfielder. Hull about to come into a whole lot of money, especially when those deals for Jaden Philogene and Jacob Greaves go through. You'd imagine Yukoshlu would be one of West Brom's higher earners, so while they won't want to lose him, 
him departing would probably ease up that wage bill a little bit. I think with the Turkish link to Hull City as well, this one sort of makes sense from that angle. But just in general, he would be a really tidy pickup for a side like Hull. Ian Perveda is still on the hunt for his next club upon him being let go by Leeds United. The likes of West Brom, Cardiff and Luton all keen. I know Sheffield Wednesday fans want to see them re-signing him, but does seem as if the interest from elsewhere is a little bit stronger right now. Very tidy player, and especially because he's available on a free transfer, you would imagine he's got quite a few proposals in front of him right now. These next few days could be quite decisive in him deciding his future. Well, guys, there we have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you did go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like. As always, anything that we did miss from today's video, make sure to get it in the comments down below. Well, apart from that, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Come on.